This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Where we want to educate you about our market, empower you to make wise decisions, and help you engage with our expert contributors. I want to get right to the stats for you. So let me show you what's been going on the past week. Here's the stats from this past week. And, and for, you know, forgive me as I, as I turn my uh, attention to this. Uh, the week of uh, the 11th, uh, as of last night. And again, this is just single family homes. But um, currently available, we have a little over 6,000. Last week, we had a little over 6,200. That's come down a bit. Now, the rest of these data points are all week, only one week's worth of data. Um, while that first one is currently available, that's everything we have available right now, a snapshot. The rest of these are data from the last seven days. So last seven days, we put 821 homes in escrow. That's single family homes. That's up significantly, 81 from last week. And you've seen, and we'll show you the track of that. I'm gonna show you the, uh, how that's been tracking for the last several weeks. You'll see it's been climbing every single week. The number of closed went down a bit. Uh, only closed 416 last week. It's down about 82. Withdrawn 190. This number has been fluctuating right around here every week uh, for the longest time. It's not an unusual number on a weekly basis. Um, the median sold price went down a bit. Again, when I do these, these sold prices and the sold price per square foot, I, they're, it's such a small sample size. I don't want to overreact to it, but we're going to look at that trend also and see how the pricing's been since the pandemic started. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Sold price per square foot, 170 and change. And the median days on market, 39. Not a big, you know, it went up a couple days since last week. But again, these sample sizes are small. So I don't want you to be alarmed by that. Let me show you the trend. Here's the trend. So um, you see the same data points we just shared with you, 6,056. Uh, available properties, 821 went into escrow, 416 closed. Let's go back a couple weeks and let's just look at this line here. This has remained remarkably consistent. You know, right around, it went up to 64 for a little while, came back down to 63, uh, 64, 63, 63, 61. It started when we started this thing. Actually, we, I can go back another week or two. We started with 5,655 back on March 26th. Um, so it hasn't really changed a, a dramatic amount. It's just been right around that same number. But look at the number of homes put into escrow. This is, this is significant. We go all the way back. Look at this trail. Look at that number climbing every single week, the number of homes in escrow. Now this is a telltale sign of what the business, the closings are gonna be like four to five weeks from there. You know, so that, that's what happens is that, you know, you take a look, look back on on April 30th, you had 505 put in escrow, and then you look here on June 4th, 498 closed. That's that's what's happening. What opens here closes here, and so forth. So, um, in general terms, not not exactly. Some escrows are longer than others, and it's not you know not everybody does a 30-day escrow. So, but that trend is interesting to see. Um, and and then the number of solds has kind of fluctuated, up and down. You know, it's been up and down every single week. Uh, but right in that 400 range, you know, sometime it went, some weeks it went down significantly, other weeks it went up. Um, this last week was the biggest week, when we closed 498. And the days on market has remained fairly steady, but been creeping up. So the, the inventory that's out there um, has been a little bit stale, more stale now than it was when we first started this, but it's not dramatic. And the, the most important thing I think is, is this number here. What we're seeing go in escrow the last couple of weeks have been really nice numbers. And the closings are up, and I think they'll be up significantly next month. The RJ also had another article, interestingly enough, kind of collaborating with, or, or, or corroborating, I should say, my, my data points, basically saying the home sales were dropped in May amid the pandemic, but prices, they actually say they went up. And I think what they, their sampling, I have to tell you, their sampling is more than just single family homes. They're also including high rises and condos, which I'm not including in my data points, uh, only for the point of consistency with my radio program. We've always done just single family homes. Uh, but anyway, um, <clears throat> Las Vegas home sales drop in May amid pandemic, but prices higher. This is by Eli Siegel and the RJ. This was just a couple days ago. Um, and he says that the uh, sales plunged last month from a year ago. This is interesting. Buyers scooped up 1,703 single family homes in May, down 13.3% from April and 48% from last year. Uh, that's a big drop. That's half. We did half the volume. That's, a, that's an important data point. Um, and remember, those are closings in May. 
So that's openings in March and April. So that's when the pandemic first hit and everybody was shut in. So that's not surprising to me, quite honestly. Uh, the median price was up, uh, was 315, up 1.6% from the month before and up 5% from last year. I'd like to see a 5% appreciation rate. That's a nice number. Um, and then, and then even the number of homes put on the market is interesting. They say it was up 28% from April, but down 29% from last year. May is usually a very good month for us in real estate. Um, so it's not surprising to me also that we're down. We've been saying 30% the whole time. The volume's been down about 30%, which I think is about right. But we're starting to see a change. We're starting to see people come out of it. We're starting to see things uh, loosen up. Um, home values are remaining steady and house hunters have been Signing sales contracts, a steady and significant increase since mid-April, uh, Tom Blanchard uh, commented. Um, here's the interesting stat. In the midst of all this, unemployment's been dramatic. 33.5%, uh, just brutal unemployment. Um, and then, but, but now that the casinos are reopening, we gotta hope and believe that that number's gonna get a lot better and we're gonna see uh, some dramatic improvement uh, in the uh, employment numbers in the weeks and months ahead. Um, and I, you know, I gotta believe that's gonna happen. Now that the casinos are open. Now again, they're only doing it uh, at a certain capacity, obviously, so they're not fully reopened, but um, you gotta believe that in the coming weeks and months that we're gonna see things improve. Hopefully the pandemic uh, does not get worse. We're hearing some states where the numbers are going up, but here in Nevada, I think we're doing very, very well. I think our governor's done a good job of keeping it at bay. I wanted to also talk today uh, and Carly had suggested this, uh, that I talk today a little bit about um, uh, tenants and landlords and as we're coming out of that. The governor has not lifted his directives yet, um, but they are going to be lifted sometime soon, I suspect. I don't know exactly when. I don't have any inside information on that, but I suspect that they'll be lifted soon. And when they do, what's going to happen? Um, are landlords going to expect and tenants going to be able to catch up on back rents that they've, worked, they, they've missed? Uh, no. I mean, I think that we have to understand that as we come out of this thing, that there's going to be negotiations that each each individual relationship between tenant and management company or landlord is going to have to be uh, dealt with individually. I, I think that um, have open dialogue. If you're a, a tenant, have an open dialogue with your management company uh, or your landlord. Make sure that they understand exactly what your financial position is, what's happening with you, if you've been out of work when you're going back. What kind of a plan can you put into place that's not going to uh, bankrupt you the moment uh, the directives are lifted? Um, and, and I don't believe the governor will ever, ever intended for anybody to have to write a huge check upon his directives being lifted. So I think things are going to be worked out. Make sure you're, again, being communicative. Reach out to your property management team or your landlord and talk, discuss it with them. Make sure they understand your situation. And if they do, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't want to work with you. Now, remember, though, landlords are hurting, too. I mean, a lot of them are counting on your rent that you're paying to pay their bills as well. And so they're they're hurting as well. So it's not, you know, it's, it's not just the tenants who are hurting. The landlords are getting beat up pretty bad, too. So remember that that's the case. And, and hopefully, uh, as things come off, everyone will be uh, reasonable with one another. And I hope that's the case. Please join us again next week as we keep you up to date on everything real estate here in Southern Nevada. Remember, send me any questions or ideas for next week's broadcast. Tune in every Thursday at 3. Also, please let your friends and family know to like our Facebook page and be reminded about our updates at LV Real Estate Radio. We'll catch you next week. Thanks again for joining us.